Hello, everybody. Welcome to the sixth installment of our quarantine film study. Uh, today, we are going to be taking a look at the tight end position. We're doing that by looking at Oakland Raiders, or soon to be Las Vegas Raiders, tight end Darren Waller. And with us, we have Charlie Coiner of First Down Playbook. Uh, Charlie is one of the few people I've met in the industry where I can le legitimately say he has coached everything. Uh, in terms of position, most people end up with a single specialty. Charlie has covered it all at both the NFL and the college levels. And uh, we've been working together the last few years as he has built a tool for coaches to build their own playbooks. There's two components to this tool. We'll talk about all of it a little later at the end of the show. But just to give you a, a quick synopsis, both with his library of plays. Coach, how many plays do you have in that library now? Uh, we've got somewhere over 35,000 plus. We, we, we quit keeping track of it at this point, but yeah, we got a lot. <laughs> so with over 35,000 plays and the ability to draw your own, there's really nothing you can't look up and build in terms of your own playbook with coaching points uh, all there for you. So we've been using that tool and you'll see that guys from us coming soon as we really enhance our glossary and get that ready for you. Um, now, Coach, we're going to talk a bit about Waller. I do have to do one thing first. I got to say thank you to our friends at the NFL who have provided Game Pass to everybody for free through May 31st, allowing us all to watch this tape, um, which is an important piece. Again, link in the description, guys, if you want to take a look and dive into that. It is only $99 for the year if you'd like to sign up for that. It's how we're watching uh, this tool. Are this cut up. I also want to say thank you to our friends at Telemetry Sports who have allowed us to be able to filter things down and create cut ups. Coach and I sat down to pick out the plays for this here a few days ago and our ability to really slice and dice the particular things. We wanted to look at him on routes that require some change of direction and see how he did in terms of executing there on targeted routes. And then we wanted to look at him in line as a blocker at the point of attack. And so our ability to filter down to that was really efficient with telemetry. So very excited about having that on board. Uh, and coach, we were talking just before we got on air about Darren's story. And so just to kind of bring people up to speed, we're talking about a young man who played wide receiver for Georgia Tech in that triple option offense, comes to the NFL, to Baltimore, still at the wide receiver position, ultimately converted to tight end, uh, ends up getting suspended, misses a year with a suspension due to uh, the perform or not the performance enhancement drugs, the substance abuse policy, and comes back from that, ends up on the practice squad, ends up with the Raiders, and then last year really gets his first chance with a, a full off season at the tight end position to come play this game. Uh, really quite a story to get to this point. And so, Coach, what you know? What were your impressions just kind of coming into the film when you hear that story of a, a a player at this wide receiver position, this convert to tight end, just with that in and of itself? What what expectations would you have for the player? Well, that was the interesting part about it. We you know we looked at the the, the cut ups, or you know we made the cut ups the other day and looked at it, and uh, you know not having been uh, in the league for several years I haven't followed the personnel quite as well quite as uh, closely uh, which I think was an advantage as I was looking at uh, you know this player right here because I just you know completely pure set of eyes not knowing a whole lot about him so what I came to was the evaluation of his talent on the field his physical abilities uh, you know some of the ways that they're using him in uh, in Oakland or Las Vegas and uh, kind of arrived at a conclusion without knowing a whole lot about what, what you're talking about. And then uh, subsequently went back and looked at that. And to be perfectly honest, it even made more sense because what, what I saw on tape was just a tremendously athletic big guy. And uh, that allows you to do a lot of things, opens up the whole world to you schematically. When you start looking at it, you know, does he is, is he an inline blocker? Can he do this? Can he do that? But uh, I think what they saw at Oakland, and, and I'm sure Gruden and uh, you know some of the other guys, Olson and those guys saw, is that he makes a defense play a certain way. And then get back to your part about you know Dan, what you're talking about. Yeah, when you go back and you look at the talent that you see on the video, and then you know the story 
you, what you're going to see is uh, just a raw guy. There's so much upside to this guy. When you start looking at probably what he did at Georgia Tech, and I didn't go back and look at video on that, but you look at that, you look at the problems that he's had, missing a whole season with substance abuse, uh, someone that's obviously – uh, sounds like you know, we all hope he's got his uh, life in order a little bit better, you know, off the field. And um, from a standpoint of all of that, I, I can certainly see what they uh, are basing uh, some of the decisions they've made on him. So we decided to start with the blocking piece first. We, we totally understand this is a passing league. We are absolutely going to get into the passing game. But to have a player labeled as a tight end from a defensive perspective – that guy's a threat to us when we have run and pass on the table. You know, and it did not have a tell by personnel. It's one of the things we'd always do on the advanced side. We try to figure out does having a certain player on the field or in a package or even in an alignment indicate run pass. We're always looking for those kind of tendencies. So, Coach, you wanted to take a look at him as a blocker just to get a feel on that side to see, again, is he a tell that this is going to be a pass – or does he actually have some functional ability as a run blocker here? So we tried to isolate him, uh, play side as best we could, tight alignments as best we could, and obviously we'll use heavy uh, heavy use of the tight copy to tell this story. So he's going to start off here. This is week one against Denver. He's against former first-round top five pick Bradley Chubb on this play. Yeah, so if you start looking at, you know, just – Basing it on this athletic talent, you're looking at a guy right here that's, you know, a tall, athletic guy that can bend. He's got good feet. I mean, there, there's everything that you want right here. He's never going to bend like you would have a lot of players bend. I mean, he's just too tall. You're not going to be able to bend to get up underneath people and block them that way. Now, they're still going to be on him about bending his knees, his hips, and all that. But the good news is he's so flexible and he's got good feet that he's going, to be, he's going to be able to get in somebody's way. Now, the things that he's going to keep getting better at because he's just going to become more and more familiar with this position is, you know, things like angles. Look at him right here. I mean, there, there's no reason – there's nothing that can happen on this play. And, and I think sometimes when guys look at, look at talent, you got to look at the play and understand what they're trying to do right here. And he's going to be on the back side of this, you know, it's more like a zone lead play away from him. But if he'll make 55 go up the field right here – not a whole lot of bad things can happen, and he'll learn that. He'll start learning that. He'll start learning that you're you're very seldom going to be wrong if you got your head inside at all costs on this. But and so that, if I'm in Oakland, that's what I go. We can coach that. You know, the talent is there. If I'm a scout, I'm looking at the coaches going get that coached up, and they will. So you were talking about where his head's at. So you were talking about inside. So his hat placement is one term. One term people will use to describe that. But you would want it on this inside shoulder, giving him a chance to at least keep Chubb away from the play. And you're going to see here as he fits this, he gets his hat on the outside shoulder, which allows Chubb to be able to play inside that gap. Exactly. And, and it, it might not get him here, but it'll get him down the road. And But the thing is, you know, they want to keep that hole expanded too because uh, – so you, it's a happy medium, but that I, that's just what happens when you're a veteran tight end in the league. You know, you see the Wittens and the guys that have done it a while. It's just a happy medium between that, a good feel. But he'll get better at that. That's not – that. you know. He you, fights um, now. I mean, that, that's one thing we're always looking for, again, with these guys with a pass-catching background. Are you going to go in there and scrap against a guy that's, a you know, a design pass rusher by trade? Exactly. And then you took, you took the words out of my mouth. I got written down on my notes right here. He's a willing blocker because it's not always the case now. I mean, after they sign that contract, sometimes there's not a whole lot of willingness there. So, uh, yeah, if if you'll keep trying to block, he'll be okay just because size and athletic ability. So one thing, guys, we've done for everybody here, again, if we look at the bottom of the screen here, we've added the down and distance game situation here. So this is still the week one game versus Denver. We're in the third quarter now. Oakland's got an eight-point lead. This is a third and two play. So now we've got a point of attack blocker on third and two. Yeah, and it's a power play that ends up bending back. Um, but if you look at what he's doing, if the play had hit front side, you know, and, and a lot of guys right here would just take that tight end and base that stand-up guy outside and let that fullback lead inside. They're doing it the old-fashioned way here at Oakland. 
taking him down inside. Now that fullback's got a tough, <laughs> he's got a tough chore. He's, but because of all that, it ends up bending back. But as far as Waller is concerned, he's in good shape right here. I mean, you know, he's going to have decent pad level. Once again, a willing blocker, not worried about, you know, putting his pads on somebody. So if this play had hit front side, I think he'd have been in good shape. The thing a guy like this is always going to have to do, you know, when you're when you're evaluating a tight end that's this tall uh, and this athletic, the, the, the more he can keep his feet on the ground, the better it's going to be. And that's, that's generally true for any blocker. But for a big guy like this, if he gets his one foot or, you know, up off the ground very long, he, he's like a pelican out there, right? The ones you see in the in your yard in the in Florida on one foot, it, it, it's no good. you got to keep both feet, keep a base. If he'll keep a base and bend like he can bend right there, he'll be just fine because those feet will move on contact too. Yeah, that was that was my note taking a look at this play is he's got his pads down. We, we got an angle here. But he never uncoils those hips. He ends up catching this linebacker more than delivering his blow. That was something I'd like to see from him is at least get his hips through, you know, not not main mm -hmm. flat back all the way through that. Try to get, get some hip roll, get some power into that because he ends up getting stood up as opposed to really neutralizing that backer. And I and I and I and I agree with you, Dan. I just don't think he'll ever get to that. I'm just gonna be honest. With my my nine years and and, and looking at you know really tight ends a lot. Um, this guy right here, if you know, you can we'll try for eight years maybe because he'll be in the league that long. He'll be a you know he'll be a uh, I don't know a Gates type. You know, always wanting to do that. But I think as long as he keeps his feet active and keeps his body on him. Uh, you're going to have a whole lot more success than you are trying to get him to bend because, you know, how tall is he? I, I don't even know. What is he, six, five, six, six? Yeah, six, six in that range. Yeah, none of us are walking around six, six. That's that, that's a long way to bend. <laughs> no, I know I'm not I'm sitting here in my five, nine chair, but. No, I, I, don't, I don't have that, uh, that height either. There's no doubt about it. The, the other thing that, that I noticed here, and this is a good clip of it right here, you're going to notice that he rarely is on the field as the only tight end, um, meaning that, you know, there's going to be a guy doing the dirty work out there most of the time. And so and, and it ain't him. So I, I think that what they see at, at Oakland or, or Las Vegas is that he brings certain types of defenses just by being on the field. And, you know, knowing that Gruden's a play caller and, and Greg Olson as a play caller, having worked with Greg, that just makes that job easier because right now as he comes over here in motion, I mean, you have to respect him, you know, to be able to put that big body on somebody. He's not going to, you know, knock their helmet off or anything, but he can put a body on that and, and become a, you know, become a, um, a run threat. So one of the things here, just looking at him off of this action is just, you know, I want to hear from you a little bit about working off of this, to that linebacker level. You know, the kind of the difficulties yeah. of readjusting in those aiming points. Yeah. And 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 once again, that that right there is the deal where you know, he's he's feeling his way through it and trying not to be wrong. Um, I just think what he's going to have to learn to do is just keep stay keep active feet. He's trying to he's trying to be right on both sides and meaning that He's trying to guess where the ball is going to hit. Just come on off and get your body on it and keep your feet active. Uh, yeah, would, would you like to see him come off, uh, get pads on, roll the hips through and all that? Sure you would. But at the same time, uh, it's just – I don't know how tall 54 is, but he's not 6'6". <laughs> so that's going to be hard. But what you want him to do here is finish. I always would tell a tight end, and, and if, if I'm evaluating a tight end right here, I, I would say – it's hard for 54 to make the block if your big ass is on him. In other words, you know, you might not be, you know, winning some kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, you know, big block award right here. But if you stay with 54, make 54 make that play with one arm. And, and, and I think that he will get better at that. Right now what he does is he kind of lets up at the end and, and 54 does make that play. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I'm with you. So same week here. We're on a second and two play. So obviously we got Kansas City feeling like we got a pretty serious run threat with the package here. Looks like we got 12 personnel tight end to both sides. 
We'll take yeah. this take copy. I mean, I, I would be encouraged by this. Once again, you know, you're, you're, he's going to get better. And everything you're seeing him do, do he did not really do. Uh, yeah, did he block? Did he block at Georgia Tech? I'm sure he did because they throw the ball three times a game. But, um, but it's a different kind of deal. It's a different feel. But I like what I like about this is what what year the year is this? You guys know this two that this last year is 2019. Yeah, but I mean, is it midway? Is it um, because it looks like to me he's starting to get an idea about keeping your pad square because he's square out here to some degree. He's he's widening that hole. He has an understanding. He'll begin to get a feel for you know that right now is the point where you want to get. You used to call it heavy inside hand, right? At this point, what you're doing is you're widening the hole. You're staying square enough where this dude is like, all right, I got this six six thing I got to get away from. He'll right at that point right now learn to use a heavy inside hand, all right, and without holding, finish up the field right there. And he, and he does. I mean, he does right there. That's that's good, guys. That, that's hard to do now. Um, not many of them in the league will do that. Now, is it a finished product? Heck no. But I think that I understand what they're looking at right here. And, and one thing, so this is week two. Week one, we saw him against Bradley Chubb in Denver, and he gets his hat on the outside. So one week later, now we're at least nose and nose mm-hmm. on that. Yeah. Are going to make some small adjustments within one week? Absolutely. And to your point, this one he actually finishes. You know, you can see him staying yeah. on there and taking that all the way through. Heck of a play by 53 here by Kansas City. And just to sure give, is. Just to give him a little credit, they expect yeah. him to get sucked up in the wash, one of those doubles to come off on him. He, he scraped beautifully. So bringing that forward. Now we move forward one week. We're in week three. The first and ten play here that put him in motion. Yeah, it's a split zone right here, really lead split zone. So just to kind of help people out with the concept here, let me bring that forward a little bit. Obviously, you saw from the wide guys, he's going to come cross formation here and kick out. But talk to us a bit about what that play, you know, is trying to do. What does that block really do for the whole concept? Well, it's it, it's – it's a harder concept than people think it is. And and the way I used to coach it with this play right here is you leave no air between uh, that tight end on our left as we're looking at it and his outside cheek and your, you know, your inside hip. And so it's really hard because most tight ends will, they'll leave a space and somebody will come underneath and watch the way this uh, six technique actually plays this play. It's hard. He plays it really well, really tight. Waller gets up underneath him a little bit. Now, once again, in fact, he goes to a seven. All right. So let it go. And I mean, if, if he was going to be wrong, and I say the tight end, I, the, the tight end actually outside release the tackle right here. If he was going to be wrong, a lot of tight ends would have missed this and let 99 come inside of him. And he doesn't. I mean, he's got a good feel for the game right here. I'm going to show you another one of these plays where his athletic ability gets into it, uh, comes into the play. But you can tell right now he understands he's trying to get his hat inside at the last second. And once again, you know, he ends up with his body between the ball and the defender. All right. Now it's, it's hard to be hard to be physical when a guy comes down in seven technique and stunting down the side like that, but, but he gets it done. And there's a lot of moving parts through that backfield. He's got to work around the handoff. We got to get the fullback through you got 98 getting knocked back here on the right guard, and then he's got to come in and fit that. So that was never going to be hit with his full power. No doubt. And then, again, they, they get bottled up with Trent Brown on the ground there, big bodies. So that, that there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of mess in that action. Just the way it usually is. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Well, Mo- Oakland, Minnesota's really taking it to Oakland in this one. Now we're in the fourth quarter of that game. It is 31 to 7. Another first and 10 play here as Oakland is working themselves back into it. And just to give everybody a note here, he's up top. Same deal. Like, I think he squared the left tackle bust right here. He should be coming up on the inside uh, on 54 probably. Uh, but at the same time, you're looking at Waller, 
and you know he's he's square he gets his body on him now what you what what's what they're going to talk to him about for the next 10 years is you know try to get a little movement on 95 here instead of just you know running laterally down the field but but i'm telling you right now in the nfl i mean those holes oftentimes come horizontally stop it stop it about right now those backs in the nfl if you can give them a hole they like the ones that are out there right now and they're all you know, pretty much horizontal because nobody's getting knocked off the ball a whole lot they're going to end up finding a way to, to spit through there but the thing i like with waller you know the more he can keep his feet on the ground and they see how he's kind of elongated there you don't want to get there because that's a you know a big a big man on one foot is no better than a little guy on one foot to be honest but but he does have great body control and his ability to stay on this thing and like i said i think that tackle probably probably should come up on 54 year yeah no, there, there, something, something's a miss with that all the way across. And so when you're talking about movement, just to clarify, you're, want, you're talking about vertical displacement? Yeah, exactly. Vertical displacement. And it's great when you can get it. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, you know, they, they, they're good players too and they get paid. But the, the, the one that, you know, I, I would think that – and they're screwed up here a little bit like you're talking about. But – if, if he were going to have that tackle come off, this is another deal right here to where he's got to feel himself losing 95 inside, and he's just got to use a heavy inside hand late with it. And then actually at that point, yeah, get vertical. There's, yeah. No, there's, no, more, there's no more advantage to keep running horizontal. But everything we're talking about with him, to, to me, uh, not everything, but probably 80 to 90% are things that you can continually get better at as you become more and more of a veteran and get coached up on. Well, cause it, to your point, the, his effort is there. He tried, he, fight, he fights all the way through on this one and we know the body control and his athletic abilities there. So to your point, it's all technical and no one's born with technique. So everybody's going to learn at some point in their lives. And I, I'm just going to give a, a, a hint for our viewers here. At some point, I will be doing a tape on 54. I love watching that guy play football. Uh, we're going to find a way to get a, a show on him down the road. But, um, no, I'm with you on Waller on that one. So now we bump forward a few weeks. It's week eight. So we're leaving week three. We're now to week eight. And we're sitting here first in goal. And obviously got a lot of, a lot of bodies in the box here for the Houston Texans. All right, so we're over here on this side of the formation. Yeah, so so assuming that the scheme is right, and what they're going to do is they're going to leave this uh, stand-up nine technique go. It looks like they're they're you know they're going to block really probably the rule right here is block the most dangerous two of the three out here, right? You're going to leave somebody hanging on, on the backside. Th this is exact. I'm, I'm going to give the right tackle credit and, and say he's right. You know that that because he looks like he's pretty certain that's what he's supposed to do. If that's true, you know the little things like you know Waller's got to cut a split down there a little bit if he can, if he has time, and if he can't, he better not be shuffling inside right here. You better drop, you know, you better drop cross and get going and try to get because this is not a, you know, th this is not a. It might it started as an under defense with a shade five. This is a head up four technique. So you got to come on down here and get inside of this at all costs and. Uh, just things that he'll get better at. Now, I don't think he'll ever be the guy that you want to play uh, in this situation a lot. Uh, I think he's more of a deal, like I said earlier, that brings uh, certain defensive schemes because of what all the other things he can do. But he ought to be able to do this enough to tie up that backside uh, that backside tackle. You don't think the backside scoop against J.J. Watts is forte? <laughs> no, not, for, <laughs> not a lot anyway. I mean, he, he, he stays with it. That's that's the thing I want to point out to people. As, as the league keeps moving and the passing game keeps getting stronger and the guys on the college side don't spend a lot of time blocking, and, again, we know his background's a little different, but the less we have of these opportunities for these guys to block, most of these guys, maybe even they understand the concepts, may not want to. And so he, he's right. showing an understanding of the concepts in a lot of ways. Again, to your point, he should have been faster on this one. But he's he's in here fighting to make this happen. I got to give him credit for that. 
No, he un- yeah. No, then, then that tackle has no need to be that fast either. But but once again, it all how much how much work has he had right next to seventy seven? They'll all get better. You're gonna see in the passing game, you know, just where to me it just looks like uh, I, I think this what's going on right now with uh, you know the the pandemic and all that. I think it's gonna. I think it really hurts a guy like him. The more he can be doing little things that we're seeing um, mistakes on tape like this, the better off he's going to be. And, and he's probably missing out on a lot of work, but, uh, but yeah, those are the type of things I see where he's just going to have to improve a feel for the game. Alex, I want to know who 97 is here from Houston on this one. I, again, I, you, you guys, I apologize. My eyes get caught up on some other stuff. Sometimes I, I just, I was impressed by him making a pile here when he felt this, and then his athletic ability to get back up and secure the tackle. Well, he made a play on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my goodness. You know, making the piles one thing, it bubbled the whole thing, made it really tough for everybody. 66 can't come around here. But uh, to be able to get back up and then wrap up the running back uh, is really something else. All right, so we bump forward two more weeks now, and we're into week 10 here. And we're sitting here on a fourth and one play. All right, fourth and one. Oakland is down by four with two minutes to go in the first half here on that side of the field. I just got to know Angelo Blackson was the player for Texans. Well done, Angelo. All right, so Waller goes in motion. And he's got a whole backside on the fullback dive. Again, we're going to see him cross the formation here. Make sure everybody sees that. What are you seeing there, Coach? Well, same deal. I mean, it's 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 just understanding. Um, all right. Well, that is that ball going to cut back? You know, to him, it, it could. Anything could happen. You know, that's very talented. Now that that's knowing that you're handed to the fullback, probably not. <laughs> you know that that's going to be play side. So I think he's, I think what he understands right there is that he's in good shape just because of the way the guy's planning. Uh, but at the same time, don't lose, don't lose him inside. I would just, I would be telling him right there, and he tries it, unless the whistle blows. At this point, right now, start start sprinting north, right up field, and make the you know make exactly. If you get your big body going that way, you're either going to be on him or he's going to go around you. If he goes around you, he's not going to make the play. But but at the same time, play ends up and he's on the guy. Um, yeah, I, just, I think that he'll be able to do stuff like this on the backside. And I mean, you got to respect him. Your point see is now about not having the spring program, it is going to be these little things like his left hand here. Yeah. You know, he's not able to get on immediately and to not have these off-season programs, it's going to be hard for him to get, you know, you're not going to get those reps back. No doubt. It, it's <laughs> going to hurt a lot of, you know, the, hurts the guys that need to develop as players, put it that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we bump forward one week here or in week 11. This is a first and 10 play. Got 13 personnel. He's in snug up top. And we're going to see the run come right off him. We'll bring it to the tight. Yeah, this is a, a rare one where they run at him. So he's got the D end here, one on one. Right, same same deal now. But what what he's starting to get a feel for, all right, is staying square. I mean, some some tight ends that come in his situation never understand that part of it. Now, here's the hard part about coaching a tight end and getting them, you know, to feel this. Once again, I, I don't want to get into the technique too much of, of the tight end play because I know we're talking about talent and evaluating players, but it's some tight ends never get it. They never get that you have to try to maintain a square block if, if you're expecting, you know, to open up those horizontal holes I was talking about. But right now, all right, this is where he will he will improve so much in the next two to three years. He'll understand that at this point right now, he better get a heavy inside hand, his left hand, and he better 
that that better be his emphasis because he's going to have to get vertical with 94. Okay, and the only way he's going to ever do that is have a heavy inside hand. I, and 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 once again, you can see his big long left leg getting extended out there. <laughs> you you he can do that only because he's such an athlete. But still, the more he can learn to keep those big feet on the ground, um, you know, just like all offensive line coaches teach, he will be better off. He's still got that leg dancing out there. Um, yeah. so Hubbard gets bumped off here, and now he sees that inside gap, and he works himself off that block. Yeah, and and this play might have been designed to bounce. I mean, if you look at – I went back and looked at the, uh, you know, the backfield action. It looked like to me the back knew he was going out there the whole time. So – the fact that he loses inside maybe not be as may not be as big a deal as I'm making it. Um, he's not going to be more squared up if he's going to be yeah pushing him inside at least be washing him down. That's right. But he does again. He stays on it to the finish. We've only seen that one play, play two I think was the only one so far where he didn't really fight to stay on it to the finish. If you're if you're coaching defense against him, I guess sometimes it's easier to get the value of a, a guy like this, you just if you're looking at him and he comes over in motion or if he lines up, you know, on your defensive end, you're, you're not going to be dismissive. I mean, you're, you're not even going to go into the game plan thinking they'll never do that with him, but he just can't do it or won't do it. Yeah. Uh, and, and so he does enough to make them respect that. So we're sitting here third and two. Th this is the play I was talking about. I think this is a split zone. Um, I, I believe I might be wrong. Get a little older, my man. Yeah, this is it. I want you to watch the athletic ability on this play right here. This is a play that if you're, you go to sleep on, I mean, th this dude is six six. He puts his he puts his left foot in the ground on this because he does that bad angle I was talking about earlier, and he kind of has to because his penetration inside that bad angle I was talking about. He's on it here, but he puts his left foot in the ground and drives inside and actually gets the inside part of this guy. This is a hard play for a 6'6 dude to make. Oh, and Correa here from uh, Tennessee. I mean, this is tight. This is a flat trajectory. Yeah. It's exactly what you're teaching those guys to do when you have a, a linebacker that can fall behind. So he's taking this thing in. But to your point, wow, that is that is really impressive. Because he sees I mean, it there. He knows he's got to get up in there. And to your point, to stop – and get his hat across that hip. Yeah, even from the end zone, see, it, it, I, I just kept watching. I'm going like, yeah, if I'm if I'm in Oakland or Las Vegas or you know, I, I'm going where else? Where, where where else am I going to find this? On what other roster where he's not already making a bunch of money and you can't get him? So he and this is something I wanted to bring up because we're sitting here week 14, right? At this point in the season. They had already extended him mid-season. Oh, they did. Okay. Yes, I did last year. They decided to jump on it, not not wait, get on it now, and came to the table to lock him up for I think it's at least three more years. All right, now, so I'm gonna slow this down because he's yeah. he's flat across. We're moving this way. Yeah. And and everybody else is moving the opposite way, really fast. I mean, so. Yeah, to, 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 to do what he does right here is tremendously athletic. One move and we're up the field. Yep. I mean, and, and I, you know, you guys in the scouting department, you know, y'all, y'all, there are people inside the building that are continually watching stuff like this too. And, you know, to, to me, if your coaching staff and your scouting department are on the same page, you know, somebody walks down to your, office uh, as a tight end coach and goes, I know you saw that, right? And, and yeah, you're on the same page because, heck, I, I mean, we, we looked around at a couple guys to do this week, and you know, with the tight end, and, and we ended up on, on Waller here because it was hard to find a couple guys. We and did. These, we went through yeah. three or four players trying to find somebody yeah. who felt like we could do this first part. We could talk about blocking and not just spend the whole time crushing them, and we right. passed on three other players to get to this point. Now here's one right here where, you know, he's just going to have to learn to, to, to stay on it. Now, once again, playing at Georgia Tech, playing out on the perimeter, okay, um, 
to, to me, I look at him and he's just going to have to understand that you just got to trust the scheme. I mean, is this, is this an inside zone play? Is this an outside zone play? Where, where is the ball supposed to hit? So, I mean, if you know it's supposed to hit up inside somewhere, you just got to trust the scheme and not get beat inside. I mean, at this point right here, once again, he's a long dude now. There's no way he's going to get up underneath that corner. It, it ain't happening. So what he needs to do is get his big body on that corner and understand that that ball is 99% of the time going to hit inside of him. And so that's where he wants to win. If it does, that one time when it hits outside, um, a good coach won't get on his butt about that. He'll be like, hey, you know, guy bounced it out there. He bounced it out there. But, you know, you sit here and look at this block right here. If he, When he starts understanding to stay on this, um, it's kind of the same thing, heavy inside hand, but it's out in space. Um, this touchdown is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that it's that vertical, the heavy inside hand, that vertical push to fight, fight, fight. And 33 doesn't have a chance. No doubt. It's, you, you're fighting through six foot six. So th that ends up with our, our blocking kind of cut up piece of this um, themes that I, I'm hearing from you again, competitive, athletic, Seems to have a, a, a solid feel for it, but certainly room to improve some of the nuance of the scheme. Uh, and then just really needs to work on heavy inside hand and, and finishing and staying on it. Would that kind of surmise what you're seeing? It does. And I've got angles written really big on my note sheet here about the run game. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, you see it really, you see a lot in high school players and, and, and in college, you usually get better and better at it. But it's understanding the scheme like we just talked about, understanding where the defender is going to go. You know, go where the defender is going to go, not where he is. And so the the ability for him to become a, a more uh, in-tune player with the scheme and the angles of the game are going to help him a lot. And, and once again, the, the most, mo Dan, most of what we're talking about here are things that come with feel for the position, experience with the position. Uh, they're not like, oh, you know, I wish he, you know, I wish he would try harder. Or I wish he was, you know, I wish he was, you know, six six and not six two or something like that. So <laughs> I understand what 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 they're seeing from that end. Now, as you get into the passing game, run that back, uh, please, Dan, to the yep. beginning. And so once again, I'm looking at this going, all right. So we we know what he is. We you know we're talking about you and I and, and uh, everybody else looking at this with us. So you know that you've got to respect the fact that he will at least put his hat on you, all right? And so every time you start looking at the passing game now, as a defensive coordinator, you've got uh, probably it looks like 12 personnel on the field, right? Yes, sir. You. So you've got to respect – now the down and distance is what, first and 10? First and 10. Early in the game, right? So as he comes across right here, every time he comes out here, um, I think you got to look at it as – it could be run. It could be run. It could be run. Okay. Oh, now he's a he's an X or you know, he's a Z, right? He's he's flanked out. So from a defensive coordinator coordinator's part of it, that's kind of what jumped out at me as I started looking at the passing game cutups we put together. So to your point, right about here, they might still be thinking he's going to get in a wing alignment and we're going sure. to have a run play, and now we're split out. And then yep. again, he's going to get a matchup here that I'm sure that they like just from a body type standpoint. And I don't know, you know, is, is this quarters, you know, a, a type of quarters where the safety here is stepping down or is it, and I think it is some type of quarters deal, but they know that, you know, based on what they've done right there, that, that they're going to get some type of off coverage with him. And so get that one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. It, but, but one-on-one -on -one to where it's not press. And one on one, where it's, you know, if, even if it's covered three, you know, the guy's going to give some ground right there. I think, I think that, you know, the, the game has changed so much. And, and you sit there and go, does a tight end help you in the run game? <laughs> and so immediately what we do is we think, and I, you know, I'm old fashioned too. We think like, okay, can he line up and is he going to be able to zone with the tackle, block down and let the tackle pull and all those type things? But, um, you know, at this level right here, does a tight end allow you to run the football uh, based on if, if you play it a certain way, you will do this with him. If you play it another way, then uh, he might just stop, like you said, in the wing position right there, and we might run it for five. So five yards is five yards. 
in the NFL, you don't get real picky about how you get it. And I think that's what he does for an offense. So when you're seeing him run this little route here, what kind of thoughts are going through your head? Well, I get to it more uh, in the later part of the deal as I've kept watching him. But yeah, I think he can be, I think he can be more succinct with all his routes. And I think he and this, this is a big part right here where he and Carr are going to miss the time together a lot if they're not together. But I think that uh, just the ability to put his foot in the ground, you know, show Carr his numbers right here, um, it, it's, it's okay. It's just going to get better. In other words, don't drift. Don't drift at the top. Just put that, you know, be a stationary target. And that way, I think Carr started holding the ball a little bit as the season went on, to be honest. Okay. So this now, is week one. It was certainly something we'll keep an eye on as we work through it. Yeah, and that's a big dude getting up, turning his shoulders, getting upfield. He has excellent hands. Did I see that right? Um, I mean, are we are we talking about that he went from six targets and caught six one year, and then he went to 117 targets the next year and caught 90 of them? That, that's not right, is it? <laughs> it's, a, it's a big jump. Yeah, I, I saw some kind of stat that – it was something about then how how many targets did he have that that's this year I guess what I, I probably looked at it wrong. We'll pull that up here. We got him split out up top now. It's again twelve personnel, same week here, second and eight. Or or is he? If you're a defensive coordinator, is he? You, you know what I'm saying? Look at the def- look at rather really, end linebacker, whatever you want to call it. They're respecting it like, yeah, you know, he might just put his big body on me here. And we're out on the top of that corner in a hurry. So again, we get sink and stop and turn. Yep. And I just want to, I mean, just to jump out at it, this is not how most guys with that size body move. No. That is very quick in terms of his ability to get his hips around sink his hips, get him around, get back. He's still chopping up his feet. Dan, watch – focus just on his feet on this. Try not to watch his upper body. Just watch his feet. I guarantee you he wears wears two canoes. I mean, I promise he does. You know, a guy that size. But those – his feet are big-time active. I mean, how many years did Gates play in the league? Oh, it's got to be like 13. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and I don't know how many times he ever put his, you know, uh, you know, put his face on people and all that stuff too. But he's kind of like a Jarrett Cook, a guy that didn't, didn't care Cook play at Tennessee. Yep. Kind of reminds me of, of that kind of player too, who, who was in the league when I was in the league coaching tight ends. Man, this is this is smooth. This is very smooth. But once again, and it, like I said, this is where he and Carr, you know, need to just keep working. You know, that one right there, boom, that, that ball's on him. I think he gets the fact that, you know, just get up field with it, try to get up field with it. You're, you know, you're not going to win many of those battles. But It was 16 seasons for Gates, by the way. Not too yeah. shy. Yeah. No, he, they found a way to use him. They like this formation, at least this week. They feel really good about isolating him up here. Well, I, w- once again, um, now this is one of his. Th- th- this is, a, and we'll come back to what you just said because I, I want to. There's a reason for that. I think it's why they see value. A lot of the reason they see value in him. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, th- this is a bad route. Okay, he he's going to get better at this. He he love you know he likes to get up when somebody makes a play on him and. and act like it's interference. It's not interference. He's got to get this route right here. If he wants to go one more step vertical, that's fine. But he needs to get, you know, flat to negative on this. Yeah, at least even back to the ball. I mean, because if he comes back to the ball on this, that, 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 that safety has no chance right here, All right? And so if you drift just a little bit right here, I mean, you're going to give the safety a chance to get, get in there and make a play and knock the ball down. Or whatever, he'll he'll understand that. So we're saying right here about the forty-five is when he's really getting into that break, and we're yeah. gonna float and float and float five yeah. more. Years. 
So yeah, of and, and down here, we're up here. And to your point, now that safety is absolutely in play. That's right. He's getting, you know, even with his big body right there, uh, and and he'll he'll win a lot of these battles. It's called, and, and Carr will get it out there sooner because he trusts him. But but Carr, look at Carr. I mean, watch watch Carr's footwork here. That, that's too long to let go of a, a, a concept like this. But the reason it is, he doesn't trust him. And we're going to say this a million times. I'm telling you right now, uh, you know, our current situation, not having the ability to work with one another, these two guys need to work together. They, they need to go, you know, find some uh, town and just quarantine with themselves. They, they'll, they'll make a lot of plays if they do. So it rounds that but off. That's just, that comes with the feel for the game. on it because right there he's open. And to your point, Carr's just sitting on it. Yeah, but he doesn't trust him. You know, if, if it's a receiver tight end or, you know, there's trust in there, you know, if you get that that Brady Edelman type of trust, that ball's gone right now because you know that dude's going to flatten it. He will be negative back to it, and there's no chance. The only person you're worried about if you're Carr is that corner. You're looking at that corner make sure he doesn't sink up underneath it. But that's not going to happen. You can see they jump it right there. Now, the thing I was saying earlier, Dan, go back before. Let's just look at the formation. Okay, so, yeah, he's flexed out. We, we call it a – used to call it a close split. About you know, It's about five, seven yards right there. But at the same time, just having – this is 11 personnel. I mean, he could line up. He could take, you know, three steps on his – and line up right next to 74, and it brings a whole new creature to you, right? Yeah. There's different things that you can do from here. So I think I think that's what uh, Olsen and Gruden and, and the guys fell in love with when they started looking at um, he's doing just enough and they're seeing all the same things we are athletically to where we need to probably do this before, you know, before everybody starts seeing this. But he can do that. He can run that route a lot better, and he will. Smart play by him. So we advance one week now, and we're going against Kansas City. We got him in here, number three, to the trip side. Can't see him work here off the scramble. Mm -hmm. This is one of those things from a field perspective. He's got he's got the DN dropping off here. Well, the, the, the thing I like like here was that a lot a lot of times guys will give up on it. He doesn't. I mean, he's you know he, he has. You got to figure he's played some basketball, right? Yeah, <laughs> it would be my guess. I don't yeah. know anything about that. Somewhere along the line. Yeah, but you're looking right here. It looks like to me what he does is he's he's a center or a forward. He posts up against that defensive end, and then he bursts away from him. Yep. And, and gives Carr a little, you know, gives a, a little bit of separation there to make that play. So is there anything in the early part of this you'd want him to do before all the scramble piece, obviously? Is there anything right in there that you look at and you're like, eh, that could have been better? Not understanding the uh, – I, I don't know what his route was supposed to be, to be honest with you. Is it just a good, good old-fashioned out route? Was it, you know, was it going to be a – I'm not sure, uh, okay. but but yeah, I, I, on, on his release, I mean, you're gonna see a guy have wasted you know, wasted steps uh, and things like that. But I don't know. I think he'll I think he'll get better. At all that we we you know we we're talking about all the attributes. I mean, he he effortlessly effortlessly you know catches with his hands. Looks like to me that's not an issue at all. No, that's that's special. I mean, yeah, I mean to roll out fall back inside, catch, and turn back up. Jeez. Yeah. All right, so we advance just one week here to Minnesota. Got a first and ten play. Looks like we're in here. So 11 personnel, looks like. Again, and one of the things I wanted to pick your brain on is just, you know, when you're trying to assess 
how a player understands coverage and leverage. These are, you know, these are some of those plays I'm always interested in people's perspective on. So when you're seeing, you know, these defenders like they are here, what thoughts go through your head in terms of how, how well he's feeling what this coverage is? Well, I, here's what I like about it. I, I put this on car as much as I do him, meaning that he, he out the, I think it's really important for a tight end or anybody to, to straighten their stem at the top, right? Where, where Carr's not looking at it going like, oh, he's, he's angling out or he's angling in. Because if he has a straight stem at the uh, top, even though it's a short route like this, it, it gives Carr the ability to put the ball on the correct shoulder. Now, if, if uh, the way that uh, I always talk tight ends is let the, let the quarterback tell you where the defender is. So right now, you know, if that ball is on the outside shoulder right here, all right, then he would know to turn away from 50. Now there's a corner out there too, but you know, sometimes that's, you know, there, there's a difference in what I'm talking about here, a couple feet where the ball is and where it could be. But I think once again, this is just something where he and Carr need to work together a million times on air. So move forward again, which just one week here, we got him against Indy. And again, formationally here, they got him by himself. And he's going to come in behind that linebacker depth. Same kind of deal. You know, if, if that's a big target. Uh, he understands it. But, uh, you know, you it, it's zone as zone can be, right? What, what he's going to learn to do, go, go back to the uh, snap, please. What he's going to learn to do is, is, is get indicators out here, okay? And an indicator for, for him right now can be one or two people to tell him if it's man or zone. He can look at the two inside backers. If he knows the scheme, all right, he understands what the back is doing. He understands what number three is doing at the top. And when he releases right here, they do what they do. It's zone. I mean, you know it's zone. So – Having taken that, all right, when he's running a little an in route, ten yard in route right here, he knows already that he's going to be sitting down in a hole or throttling down at least. And you can see where he kind of keeps moving right here, and it gets to the same thing. Carr is wondering like, is he going to? You know, that ball's out, all right. But it's 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 a big deal. Like you got to trust that he's going to sit down in that hole. And and that backside linebacker. I ain't as bad as he used to be in the old days, but that backside linebacker will teach him to sit down and hold. <laughs> you'll, learn not to, you'll learn not to run through zones. Yeah, this is always a fascinating one. Again, looking at these things, because this is that first window, second window type throws. Is the quarterback anticipated? Are they on the same page? Because to your point, this one, the ball is out and coming yep. to him right now. Yep. And he can catch it. Ain't no doubt about that. So we're going to be seeing him coming in right behind 50 here. Bends it in. Yeah, and, and once again, they, they are on the same page and that ball's out. Um, but you got to be careful. I mean, once again, you get over here to the right too much, and, and that's where – you know, the quarterback's coming back and saying, I never saw him, you know. It's not a fun uh, not a fun sideline conversation on that one. No. So sticking with the Indianapolis game here. And, and again, guys, what we tried to do with this particular cutoff, we wanted to see routes where Waller had to break things or, or, or work the top as opposed to just running, you know, seams or goes or what have you. We wanted to see him actually have to throttle down some ways and, and break things off a bit. And I think that, you know, there, there's a million things he can get better at. Um, but I think that's where you go next with this guy. You know, I think you do run some double moves with him. If, you know, but let's face it, he's, he's, he's run a lot of stick routes, and, and they're going to start sitting on it. They do before this cutup is done. But, you know, you start running a stick and go, a nod, or whatever you want to call it, or and actually letting his big body go down the field a couple times, uh, that, that's going to help. That's going to help everybody's calls too. He seems to understand release here, getting himself away. Doesn't yep. keep anything. Keeps seems to be square. 
Now, this is more like what I was talking about before, right? Like that ball, if, if that ball probably is on his outside shoulder when he, when he actually gets it, and it t- should tell him turn away from, and it does, turn away and get upfield. And once again, they're, you know, those linebackers are good too, but it's going to give you a chance for yards after a catch. So we go forward one week here. We're playing Chicago. I believe this was the uh, the London series. So again, he's got himself split out up here. Got himself. I apologize. That, that's bad language here. Coaches have him split out up here. This is where he just needs to be, you know, just hang on with the feet. But that, you know, now what's the personnel on the field here? My guess is it's at least 12. It's uh, yeah, 21 or 12. 22. 13. Yeah, oh, you got, yeah. You got, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Here, sir. First and 10. So, yeah, I mean, you look in the middle field's closed. And this is a good old-fashioned kind of cover three, you know. And so you know that that guy up top, if they're going to play it like this, and that's why coaches do their homework, they know they're going to probably get this. So what you've got right here is a soft cushion corner out there to where, yeah, Carl will trust this, and he does. Rhythm, throw it out there. Let the big man work. Take advantage of that cushion all day long because he can actually get in and out of that way better than most tight ends. Most tight ends are not going to come around that fast. I mean, it's not wide receiver completely here, but this is this is quick. Or a big man, it sure is. Fight forward and gets himself close to the first down. Yeah, go back right there. See, Dan, that's, that's kind of – Yep. Two, it, 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 there, there are the two creatures right there. Oh, look at that. All right, so now you're lining up. And you're the Bears, and you're sitting there going, "Okay." Once it goes back to our earlier conversation, he doesn't, you know, he's not a he's not a big boy dog when it comes to blocking and all that stuff. But he's there. You got to respect it. All right now, uh oh, no, Are we really going to change that middle field closed defense just because they did this? Probably not. I mean, you could check some type of too deep or whatever, but you don't want to do that either because you still got you know fullback in the backfield. It's, he just became an X. He went from being a Y in that personnel group to an X, is what he a split in. It's a great piece to have. It's a lot of flexibility. Now we're now we're sticking with that up here. I mean, this is this is some trust right here. Yeah, it is. I mean, because it, it was played differently this time. Like, I'm sure that, you know, at some point, you know, Chicago's like, we're going to cover the middle field too. We're not going to give him that cushion out there anymore. Now, this right here, uh, you know, once again, it gets back into that thing of, you know, are, are you going to, you know, can, can he can he put his hands on this little corner and go by him? You know, can you, can you throw a, a back shoulder ball down the sideline to him? Can you do those things with him at some point? If you can, you know, it's going to it's going to make this a lot easier throw and catch, right? Because if you keep doing this and he's pressed up like that, all right, you know, it, it's going to – the balls will get juggled uh, or that corner is just going to step up underneath it, you know, and, and it ain't going to be a good thing. But if you can start stretching the field with him, you know, maybe a little hitch and go or something, that's when, that's when this becomes an easier play. I just – I'm so fascinated by how quick he can get – sink and get back. I mean, this is this is not what you see from tight ends. This is not what you see from this frame. This is very efficient with a, the DB that's right there. 21 is right there the whole way. Yep. He's able to sink. If, if he was slower into that, 21 would be already wrapped back behind this thing and make sure that that's not a completion. But he gets in and out of that so fast that he opens up a window. I mean, he fully separates against the press corner there. I mean, that's that's X receiver stuff. And once again, you said it best. I mean, it's um, you know, it's Carr trusting it too. I mean, that's well, in fact, Carr bird dogs us the whole way. Yeah. I mean, I mean they know he's waiting yeah, on this. They, yeah, they they know what 
Chicago is going to do. Now, I think, I think probably they think that guy's going to be a little softer out there. But once again, that's a big body to play through if you're, you know, you're five, five, eleven, six foot corner. So they move forward three weeks now. And again, just formation. So we're in 12 personnel, it looks like again, but look who number one is. Yep. Ah. Horrible still, route. Same thing. Still floating. So again, guys, he's breaking here. You're, coach, we're saying the 10. Looks like we're we're starting to break there at the 10. Yeah, exactly. And he I don't have a, I, I don't even have a problem with where he starts to break, you know, but but man, just work. Don't be, don't lose ground at this point. Wherever you break, don't lose ground. Work back to the ball. I mean, Car, Car will begin to trust this too. This ball should already be gone. Yeah. I mean, the ball should be well, gone. Understand? It should never be a factor. I mean, if he breaks this thing flat or or yeah. point downhill, that guy's never a factor. But shit, he runs into him. Yeah. He breaks. The only person you know, I used to tell the tight end this and any receiver coach, I mean, you're responsible for that guy. Carr's responsible for the guy here on the back or the, the, the inside part of the bunch. I mean, he got to make sure he doesn't sink up underneath it. But this ball could be gone, and, and yeah, this, this, this ought to be if, – if they progress the way that, you know, you should progress, these throws will begin to be as easy as those stick routes we're seeing. Yeah. And so the note I have down here is the longer the route for him, the more chance of error, and the, and he usually makes it right now, but he'll get better. Yeah, and he could learn to tighten that. He has the body control. We've seen it. We saw on that rim block against Tennessee when he got back underneath 44. I mean, he can, he can move his body. But you see him at the end of that play. He, do, he did that on both, on both bench routes that he ran poorly. Watch him when he gets up. He doesn't understand that he's interfering with himself, not not the DB. The yeah. DB shouldn't have a chance to interfere with him. Absolutely, absolutely. So again, formationally here, and this right. is a formation we see a lot from Kansas City in order to get Kelsey lined up yep. by himself. Well, it's like like you've been saying: is he a is he a Y or is he an X? That's a tough defensive thing to do because again, then you got to start picking. Do I want the corner? Do I want the safety? Am I going to deal with my linebackers? What's that do to my run fits? You know, that's a lot of moving pieces, and especially when they come out and they move those formations like that. So you think it's one thing, and then you get another one, and they keep doing this where it's a tight enough split. He can go get Melvin Ingram right now. Yes, he could. Now this is a second and twenty. So I've seen they're, they're keying some certain things. A lot of them have these yards underneath. He understands, you know, you can tell he's been coached, you know, the old deal, you know, split two, run away from one, right? So he got zone right here. He, he At first he, he almost doesn't want to do it, but he, he's being coached. Right now he, he says, all right, I got I to gotta try to split these guys right here. Yeah, he's man. I'm 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 kind of bummed for him that not having this off season because they like said, these things that he needs to work on can absolutely be improved. They're not they're not the hardest things to install. They're and they're and they're really other than the initial part of teaching it and staying on staying on them about it. I mean that's where you know talk about the advantages of having a veteran quarterback well one of the advantages of having a veteran quarterback is in the off season you know Peyton Manning's a coach he, he he's going to he's going to run that bench route or, or run these routes that we're looking at you don't need the coach to be there because he's going to come he's going to walk over to him after that play and go like look dude there's no way i have any idea where you are on that if you do it like that yeah and so that that's what he's going to miss i don't know if cars to that level yet or not uh, but even if they, I don't know what part of the country they're in, if they can get together or not, but if they're not, they're, they're, they're going to be missing a big opportunity. So now again, we just saw them motion to get themselves in trips. And again, he's split out here. I mean, because of the personnel and two tights and, and the ability for him to actually 
put his body on somebody out here. I mean, you got a middle field close look. Now you brought this up before. You said wait till later in the season. They're going to start sitting on this. Mm-hmm. Get no movement here. We got a flat-footed defender on a vertical stem. Well, earlier in the season, we were seeing these guys retreat yep. and play with depth. He's just waiting on it, waiting on it, waiting on it. Because it's not a bad route, but they haven't shown the nod and go, to your point, and get back over the top of that. Yeah, this – when I watched this, and I'm not sure why, but as the season went on, you know, we don't have every play on here. We don't – we don't know, but but you know, I look at Carr. I think Carr is slow here too. I mean, if you're going to throw the ball here, the ball's got to be pretty quick. I mean, no, that we talked about them not being in sync and, and him waiting to watch him come open on that. We're not watching him interact with the other receivers in the team, but certainly when it comes to Waller, he was waiting on it again, not mm-hmm. anticipating with every throw. But your your point is well taken right here. I mean, at some point, you know, they're they're just going to set on these stick routes and, and things like that, and you're just going to have to let him come out and give a little. You know, the 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 way that I used to talk about when I taught uh, nod routes and double moves to my tight ends, the 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 better the the more uh, the better receiver you were, the less uh, you had to put into the initial move. He won't have to put a lot into that. He'll be able to just kind of go and put one foot in the ground and take off and it'll be a big deal for them. Man, he gets around fast. Come on now. Cincinnati's a little late on it, so they're going to get the yardage there. But I, I mean, I just, I want people to take a look at that and then go watch that route on any other tight end, not named maybe Kelsey or Kittle. It ain't going to look like that. But I will say, I will say at this point in this cut up with this formation, I mean, you want to talk about being a linebacker, or a safety coach. I mean, there's a pretty distinct yeah. tell by by this split in this formation. He's going to end up right there. <laughs> he does. I didn't see you know the and the other thing, and, and and I know we're not looking at you know every, all the plays right here, but I mean with a with a tight split like that. Um, you know, bringing him across the middle on a on a you know a shallow cross or a drag or something like that. I'm, I'm surprised we didn't see that more. Yeah, definitely a way to to leverage that ability. So we move forward here, week 12 against the Jets, who didn't seem to bring their high powered video cameras this week. <laughs> here's here's more of it. We're going to see it a little bit here. I mean, they, and obviously he's got to face this against zone, but he's up top. And so we talked before about not running himself into conflict. Seems like he's got a better feel for zone and man situation here. Oh, I apologize. I got the I got the wrong guy. I got the wrong guy. I'm watching the receiver here. He's he's in the formation. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're sticking with our route concepts here. Yeah, I, you know, you just you start looking at this, and once again, you know, having heard Gruden talk, and I mean, I, I've met him, I don't know him personally, but the guys that know him talk about just, you know, the ability to go get five yards when you need it, and just move the chains. This is, I mean, this guy's a guy that gives you uh, a great opportunity to, to get another set of downs, if nothing else. It's, even if he's covered, he should not be covered just with the size. I mean, because in, in, in particularly in the red zone and things like this, I mean, you take a big guy like that, you know, you stick his ass out behind him. It, it's hard to play through it to get get to the actual shoulders and arms. If that ball's on time. We got him here, number three. Again, got to work through. Oh. Little return type route. Mm-hmm. That was a little different one. We haven't seen that one yet in this, at least in this. Well, I, I, yeah, I think what happens is you know the you know Olson or or maybe the tight end coach walks down the hallway and like you know we got to give this dude something to where he actually can get catch the ball on the move, and and I did you know didn't just run a stick route every every time. So natural progression. What what game of the year is this? It's 
this is week 13. Yeah. So you're, I, I, once again, you're going to see this guy have a whole new arsenal of things that he can do in, you know, this coming season. Um, and the key is to make sure that he doesn't become lackadaisical and, and average at the ones he already has, but you got to just keep giving him new tools. And this will be one he'll get better at when he realizes he needs to, to be patient and let this clear go through so that he mm -hmm. can work because he ends up tripping himself yep. by running off his heel. Now, again, he's an athlete. He is an athlete, gathers himself and comes back outside out of that. But if he just gave himself just a, a beat, a half beat, yep. he doesn't end up tripping himself there. Yeah, I, I would have. I, I would have never recovered from the trip. I'd have been on the ground. <laughs> oh, again, to have that that athletic ability, body control, the hands, and the willingness to get in there—it's just the technical stuff. And again, that's just that's time, a new position, more experience with it. Up top here, a little different split this time. Not that tight split. Outside release. Yeah. And, and, and there it is right there to me. Have they, have they, have they let him outside release and just run a fade? You know, it's a big body now in the red zone. If, if, if you want to do that now, not all guys can do that. I'll, my guess is he would not be ready for that yet. But once again, if, if he works on it enough, that's where, um, yeah, you you know that you're going to get a little softer corner out there if he can do that than this right here. I just like his left hand mm -hmm. up here as he gets into this right there, and it, it's hard to see. I understand, but he gets that left hand in there and gets that clear to get himself back out. And then, coach, what, what, that the ability to catch this ball, pluck out above his head in the air like that. I mean, how many guys were you around that had that ability? Not many. I mean, I, I mean that, yeah. There's a young player I coached that uh, had that kind of talent, but he didn't. He didn't have that kind of work ethic. It takes all of it. It takes all of it. I mean, this is the to your point. The, the question to me is: Is he want to be a craftsman? You know, does he right. want to do all those things and refine all those skills? Because if he refines those skills, there's going to be a period of time where that, in conjunction with his frame and athletic ability. He's going to be an absolute nightmare. And then late in the career, you mentioned the Gates. You mentioned Witten before. These guys are I – mean, it was 16 seasons on Gates. Witten's still playing, ironically now, with Las Vegas um, because they, they do have that – all those techniques in their bag despite the fact that the athletic ability isn't what it used to be. That's it. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. He'll – I mean, same deal. The fact that they're not together right now, I mean – the ability for this guy to spend time with Jason Witten, immeasurable advantage. It, 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 it just wish they were. I wish they were actually together right now. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm fortunate they're not. But all right, so here's here's one thing I, I'm uh, I'm liking. I'm interested in your take on it because I'd always been taught in these scenarios when you have this middle dropper like that, drive him upfield, you know, really work that upfield. It looks like he does a pretty good job here and then coming off of it. Yeah. I, I, I think it gets back into the basketball part of it again. You know, what, what is he really doing here? I think he, if you, if you think this guy's walling you off and he probably is since he's number three, then to me is, you know, by, by space, right. You're, you're trying to, Make, make this guy give a little ground so that when you come out of this thing, you're going to come out. Um, you're not going to come out between the numbers and the hash. You're actually going to come out of it on the hash where you've got all that space in there to work. And he does. But once again, you know, it, it's, it's the athleticism, the way he comes out of it. And splits, you know, splits it right there. Again, this is another one where Carter seems, uh, feels a bit late. We'll see exactly when he gets this thing out of there. Uh, he had to move a little bit. I got you. Bring it back and see him actually just lean in, break off, 
Take the two steps, settle down. It's good. That's good after the catch. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so we're down here, number two. First and 10 now. Tennessee's got a 21-point lead, so they're playing a little softer. And he's back to his – back to the stick. Well, it's just a – I mean, it's it's a handoff. I mean, you can, hand, you, can, you can hand it off and hope you get, you know, four yards and hope you break it, or you can throw it to him. You know, no, he's going to get – Four, five, six yards, and maybe he'll break it. He does run this well. And then he's got to make an adjustment here on this ball. Just a little bit low. I'm always interested if they can flip their hands and catch. Actually, he, he frames it up top a little bit. I thought it was a little lower in the first pass. But I'm always interested if they can flip their hands and catch the low stuff. So now we're in a week 15. Jacksonville game here up by seven. Going to start off and have a little cushion. Yeah, this is the same as the last one uh, that he that he ran in route. Just going to have to be careful. I mean, to me, you know, to me, you just got to learn to sit that thing down in that hole right there. Even come back, even come back to the quarterback zone if you want. You know, this is going to be the player you're not going to want to see. Yeah, you're going because you keep running over now. Sooner or later, they're going to get you. I mean, it, it's, it's a different league now, and, and for good reason. But, um, but yeah, you can't run through zones in that league. So we'll see him again here. Ball. So you look. The thing he does, Dan, before we get to that part, is that I, I mean, I see he has a good feel for straightening that stem, you know, and because what you coach there is you want that DB or anybody back there playing the back end to have a three-way threat, all right? Where it's vertical, it's a you know a corner or a bench route, or it's also or maybe you know some type of skinny seam route, you know be like a post-it where we're an outside receiver. So he keeps all of those threats alive and with his speed and size and everything. And then, yeah, now you start building the tree from top to bottom. Now you start building your basic cross, you know, your in route. But right – and you can see he, he runs he runs past it. I mean, he, he kind of runs past cars, car sees it. I mean, that, that, that ball, he'll learn to sit that down where I'm going with that. Absolutely. Because he, he drove that thing well enough that 37 couldn't come back underneath him, you know, between, again, the stem and then his just his foot speed put him in great shape there. Same deal, his favorite formation. Yep. A little wider split, but he gets soft, breaks it off underneath, catch, turn, first down. Pick up six yards on second and six. I mean, that's an easy move to sticks play. And it's there for him over and over again. Right, and, and, and freeze it there. But I, I think there's a difference in, in, you know, so many different personnel groups. The, the guys in the NFL are the very best at, uh, you know, the different ways that you use different people. But And, and oftentimes what, what happens is you come back on Monday morning and you see what they did to you, you know. Um, and, and right now, I mean – it essentially, they have said he is. This is twenty-one personnel. I mean, excuse me. I, I, you got a two wide outside. I guess this is uh, twelve personnel, but you're, treating, but you're treating it like eleven. I mean, they have said he's a good enough athlete. We're going to line him up at X and just run our eleven personnel plays, right? And so that's that's great. But at the same time, all he's got to do is you know, shift and come line up next to 74. And yeah, maybe, maybe the right tight end shifts over to a flank. You've got a whole different set of problems that you have to deal with on defense. And to your point, I, I imagine with all this time, Gruden and Olsen are going to have a whole lot of stuff. In sure. Struggle. 
<laughs> installed for the first few weeks of the season to, to make use of all of this. All right, here. So our last couple plays here as we, as we wind down. Again, we got Jacksonville up by four, Oakland driving, fourth quarter, trying to take the win here. We're going to see him looks like number three. We're going to get him at least move the sticks here, it looks like. Mm-hmm. He knew where they were. What a snag. What a snag. I think they had the tight copies in to give a, a way better angle on this catch. Back shoulder, chopped it, you know, someone chopping at the arm. And that's his ball. Pulls it in tight. Yeah, that's that's the stuff that you're not coaching. I mean, it's yeah, he's got some he's got some ability that's just his. My goodness. All right, so again here looks like number three here into the week 17 game, last game of the season for Oakland. And the ball doesn't get there. But we've seen that route a few times here in the last segment. I th and I think that's the conversation that they've had about him, is that if you give him a spot to get to on the field, uh, he, he's probably going to get there and get there better and faster than most guys at that position. But it's when you give him a route. Like when you run a bench route, you know, it's when you come out of it exactly – uh, how deep, you know, where are the chains? What's the game situation? And then, all right, where, however you do it, you, you got to be flat to negative. If you're running it an in route, you know, it's got to be able to see man versus zone, how to set it down. Um, you know, because a lot of those zone plays, if, if it's not just the fact that if he's running through zone, he's going to get hurt. It's also the fact that if he'll sit down in that zone and car trust him, he'll get the ball where eventually he'll start splitting those defenders. Yeah. And now you, you know, you got a big dude running down the field and, all the things that we talked about too, from the standpoint of how do you build on what he already has, and and it's you know this is just one example, but uh, you know I talk to coaches every day right now, high school and college, and, and I don't talk to as many NFL guys, but it kind of brings home to me um, the average fan does not understand just how much work probably gets done this time of year, you know, with one on one one on one connections with receivers and. Uh, quarterbacks and you know all that kind of thing. No, this is this is going to be difficult for those you know those guys that fall in that developmental category. Uh, I think it's a it's real clear why they added Witten to the mix, and it, it it might not be for the play on the field as much as it might be for a mentor in that room to get this kid these details. Uh, they locked them up last year. They got a few good years out on um, on a really good contract for the team side. The Raiders made a smart move from from my standpoint. Uh, looking there, I'm I'm excited to see what this young man does moving forward as he can get more time with that coaching staff. But coach, I wanted to uh, really hear a little bit more from you on first down playbook and and to give people a little bit more on what you know your mission was when you set out uh, to put this together. Yeah, first down playbook. You know, on the surface when you look at it, we talked about it earlier. You know, you're talking about. 35,000 plays, uh, you know, the ability to find what you want. There's there's not much football uh, that's not in there, and we're always growing. Uh, you know, we, we've kept up with the RPO phase and, and all the, the – unbalance has made a big comeback in football and things like that. But at the end of the day, what First Down Playbook is about is almost what we just did there, meaning that our goal is to get coaches away from spending so much time drawing plays, drawing schemes, and get them back to working with the players. Now, okay, if you're in the NFL, I get it. You've got, you know, a quality control guy or, or seven uh, analysts. And, uh, you know, if you're at, at Alabama or wherever right now, you've got maybe you know, more help than you know what to do with. But that's not the typical situation. In most places, uh, we don't have enough help. We are our worst enemy because we love to reinvent the wheel. You know, we're the only industry in a, really probably the world that um, 
redoes our work. I say it all the time. How many times do we have to draw an inside zone against a 4-3 over cover two to get it right? I, I would think about the first 10 times we do that, we would probably have it down. We would be better served maybe spending some time with Waller to make you know, a young Waller in high school to make sure he could run a good stick route and things like, and, and make sure he's, you know, doing all the other things that we have to uh, be a part of as a coach. But that's really what first down playbook is. We, we've seen uh, a lot of growth. Uh, we just released the ability to edit all these plays last year. And so it's, it's been a big, uh, it's been a big deal for us. Uh, we, you know, we are coaches uh, and we serve coaches. Uh, there's a lot of technology out there that, that, uh, has good technology, but not a lot of um, football intelligence behind it. We'd like to think that we check the box on both of those. So that's who we are. Uh, we're out there for coaches at all levels. We have NFL guys using us. We have uh, college and, and obviously a ton of high school. We have, we have a lot of flag football um, youth moms and dads use us, and, and that's good. If you like football, um, that means that at some point you're going to pick up a pen and pencil and start drawing a play. Uh, we think we've got a better way of doing that. Uh, guys, I can't I can't endorse it enough. Please go check out First Down Playbook uh, for anybody that wants to get started in it. The ability to just go and look at the plays and concepts and, and coaching points that are installed with it. Again, your ability to go and start drawing uh, your own pieces. Coach has a blog. He puts out notes every single day. Uh, there's an email newsletter you can get with updates and, and things of that nature. So he's constantly putting information in front of you. Please make use of that, uh, and we hope you enjoy it. Coach, I enjoyed spending time with you today. It was a ton of fun watching this young man, um, you know, what are your kind of parting thoughts on him? Well, my, my immediate thought right now looking at us is um, how are you going to do this in about two months if we're still in a quarantine and nobody has a haircut? And you, and you have guys like me that hadn't shaved. Um, you know, you'll have guys on there that look like uh, Tom Hanks on uh, that, that movie where he was on the island. So, uh, yeah, no, this is, this, is, this is a great deal that you're doing uh, from a standpoint of, you know, the personnel. I've always – uh, you know, Dan, you, I, I can remember being in my apartment in uh, Austin, Texas, first time we ever talked. And we were both at a, our genesis right then, so to speak, where we were, you know, just kind of seeing what we could do. And, you know, we both come a long way. There, there is a, a big time advantage to the things you're doing here uh, because you can't you cannot be a good football coach if you don't uh, understand the needs and, the, uh, you know, what the players have to do physically uh, and, and vice versa. I've always thought that the better scouts, the better young scouts were the guys that walked down the hallway, shut the door, and, and maybe didn't want anybody else to hear them, but they're like, Coach, I really don't understand what your position needs to do. And, I, you know, I always put my arm around them because I'm like, yeah, you're right. If you don't understand that, you don't have a whole hell of a chance, a whole hell of a good chance of figuring out what we need. So, yeah, um, you know, as party shot right here, uh, there are a lot of different facets to this game. Um, whatever you choose – you know, be, be, a, be a pro, be an expert at it. Don't, you know, there's a lot, lot of garbage out there, guys, on the Internet right now. Uh, you know, be, be picky about where you get your information, whether it's personnel or whether it's scheme or whether it's uh, whatever it is, because um, it, it, it shows, I mean, in the end, it's going to show up. But I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Um, it's a hard time out there, guys. Once again, I talk to coaches every day. I talk to a lot of coaches every day. And I hear the same things, you know, inability to actually look a kid in the eye and, and help them right now. And, um, you know, the good news is there's not a whole lot of trouble to get into out there uh, either and, you know, things like that. But, um, but yeah, you know, we're, we're going to probably go through some more hard. In fact, I know we are before we get to it, but we'll come out the other end on this. And um, I know we'll all be glad when that happens. But I appreciate the uh, chance to be here today, Dan. Absolutely. It was like I said, it was great having you, Coach. Uh, just the thank you to you. Uh, thank you to Game Pass. Thank you to Telemetry. Uh, thank you to everybody that helps us put this on. Uh, we'll be back with, with more uh, here soon. We're going to have a uh, wide receiver position covered soon. We're going to get into some defensive back and really try to make sure we touch on everything here. But, guys, thank you so much for joining us. If you liked this, if you learned something, please hit the like button. Uh, click subscribe. You can find more information on us on our website in the description or you can see our social handles on the screen. Uh, we look forward to interacting with you more. Please let us know what players you want us to tackle. Uh, thank you so much.